So how many of you guys have a credit card? Raise your hand. How many of you guys have two credit cards? How many of you guys have, just kidding, we're not going, we're not going that, we're not going that far into it. Um, so I would say, you know, we're, we're a crowd that I'd say most of us, not all of us, most of us have a credit card. And if you're too young to have a credit card, maybe you're in high school or even a little bit younger, a credit card is a magical piece of plastic <laughs> that means free money. <laughs> and the way a credit card works is that these really generous people called Visa and MasterCard and American Express send you in the mail a piece of plastic that you can then exchange. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Best Buy, et cetera. You can exchange it for goods and services. And you just turn it in, scan it, money. Right? That's how credit cards work, right? No, that is, not, that is not how credit cards work. So I would love it if, you know, because we get them every month in the mail, just like junk mail filled with like a fake credit card. Um, I would love it if uh, the company Visa, MasterCard, American Express were to actually send me a card that was just worth free money. Like that would be great, right? They're just giving me money just to give it. That'd be great. But that's not how the world works. <laughs> No, no, no. Just so I just want to be really, really clear with all of you guys, for those of you who are just tuning in, that is not how credit cards work. Don't use your credit card like that. It is not free money. Because Visa, MasterCard, all these companies, the reason that they give you money is not just to be generous, right? They are lending you money, and you have to pay it back. And what else do they, you, what else also do you have to pay back on top of it? Interest. interest. Huge amounts of interest. Tons of money. So, some credit cards, I'd say most are around like 15%, 20% APR, annual percentage yield. So if you leave money in a credit card account, it is just accumulating, accumulating debt, 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 debt that you have to pay back. So are credit card companies generous? No. <laughs> I'm sorry if you work at a credit card company. I'm sure you, you have a very reasonable job. You know, <laughs> I just want to, yeah. They don't give just to give. They are giving in order to get something back from you. Right? Right. So we are starting a new series called Mine, Not Mine. You remember the movie Finding Nemo? Mine, mine, mine. All those seagulls like rushing. They, they see like a, a little bit of like food or something pops up on the surface of the water and they just swarm it. Mine, 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 mine. And that's sometimes how we look at our money. <laughs> this is a series about money. Yikes. Here, here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sometimes that's how we look at money. We look at it as like mine, 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 mine. Money is to be used for my purposes. Money is to be used for me so I can get ahead. Well, what God is telling us to do, what Jesus is telling us to do in this sermon series, is he's flipping that concept on its head. He's turning it around like he tends to do. And he's saying, the world tells you to use your money this way. Use it for yourself. Use it for your own selfish gain. Use it so you can get ahead. I am telling you, Flip that paradigm around. I want you to use your money for kingdom purposes. I want you to invest your money for the good of God's kingdom, for helping others, for the saving of souls. And that's what this series is all about. And that's why I brought this little friend with me today, <laughs> this garbage hawk. <laughs> and so today, we're going to be talking about what motivates our giving. What are the motives behind this giving? I'm so grateful that Pastor Garen brought that message of generosity time. It's such a picture of motivation behind giving. So it's Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. You can turn your Bibles there. Matthew 6, verses 1 through 4. Jesus says, watch out. And your Bible translation might say, beware, be, be wary of this. So that means pay attention, okay? Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. 
when you give to someone in need, when you donate, when you give to charity, etc., don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets in order to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, I ain't lying. They have received all the reward they will get. That praise that they receive, that attention, that's all the reward they're going to get for their giving. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand see what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father, who sees everything, even the motives of your heart, he will reward you for that type of giving. Amen? Amen. So this passage kind of juxtaposes, it compares two types of givers. We have the greedy giver, and we have the gracious giver. The greedy giver and the gracious giver. So the greedy giver is somebody who gives in order to get something. He gives in order to get something. Not sure, is that me? We'll do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll just let it, let it hang here. It's fine. <laughs> check, check. One, two, three. The greedy giver is someone who gives in order to get something in return. So verse 2 says, I'm so used to doing it with two hands. I need another hand. I need a third hand. When, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. The greedy giver is someone who, though their actions seem honorable, their motivations are questionable. In this passage, they're giving in order to get praise. It's just like the story of the widow's mite. They're giving money not because they want to help people. They're giving money because they want people to see how generous they are. And there's story after story about this in the Bible. People giving Just because they want people to look at them. Look at me. Look how generous I am. Also, look how wealthy I am. I can just throw this money away. It doesn't even bother me. Giving, the generosity, is just the vehicle they're using to get attention. Their motivation is all wrong. And here's the thing. We can have all sorts of corrupt motivation behind our giving. This passage specifically talks about giving to get attention, but we can give for all the wrong reasons in our own lives. We can give to get profit, right Visa, right MasterCard? (laughs) They're not giving out of the generosity of their hearts. They're not giving to help people. They're giving because they want to, they want to make money off of us. Some people give, they give to profit because by extorting other people, They're not out for the good interests of other people. Sometimes we give to get power, right? How many board of directors' seats have been purchased with a little money slid under the table, right? How many students who are able to get into Ivy League schools because their parents dropped a little money into the thing? That's real, right? (laughs) Did that happen recently? I can't can't remember. (laughs) We all do it. And, you know, these are extreme examples. But I think if we were to examine our hearts, I think every single one of us, we, we, we need to reexamine our motives behind our giving. Why are we giving in this way? Is the reason I'm giving purely to help people? Is the reason I'm giving purely to help save souls for Christ? Or am I giving for another reason? Because I want people to, to see me. Because... I, yeah, I want to look good, or whatever, whatever it is. And Jesus looks at this behavior, and he says, that is not the best way. It's not right. That's not how you should be giving. Because if your giving is motivated by earthly rewards, that's all you're going to get. If your giving is motivated by earthly rewards, that's all you're going to get. Earthly rewards, momentary praise, fleeting power, and temporary profits. It'll all fade away, right? We don't have that much time on this this earth, and then all that stuff is going to go to somebody else, right? And Jesus says to us, now let me show you a better way. Now let me show you the best way. The best way. So verses 3 through 4 says... 
But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Jesus is calling us to cast off all ulterior motives that lurk behind our giving. And we've all got them. Like some of them are buried really deep. Some of them are pretty close to the surface, right? Right? He's calling us not to be greedy givers, but gracious givers. And a gracious giver is someone who gives purely to help others, purely to honor God. That's it. There is no ulterior motive. There's nothing hidden behind their giving. All that they want to do, all that you want to do is help people. All that you want to do is invest in people. Invest in anything. All about honoring God, loving people. Right? Because that's what God's about. God is all about loving people. We see it throughout Scripture. We see it today. That's what God's about. He loves people and he deserves honor. That's your motivation. That's it. That's all you're doing. So Jesus, in, in, in contrast to the greedy giver, the gracious giver, Jesus is calling you to give in order to help those who are less fortunate than you, like the homeless or widows and orphans who need our help financially. Jesus is calling you to give in order to invest in people that you believe in, to raise them up. My grandparents invested in me, invested in Sarah when we were going to seminary. Because at seminary, you know, you have to spend money. To, it's college. You have to pay for it. And we were new family. We have, we have two kids now. We had one kid then supporting that, getting the apartment, paying tuition, all that stuff. We needed help. And without any prompting, they started sending us checks every month. Not because they are exorbitantly wealthy. They are, they're not. They've lived very humble lives their entire lives. I think I've told you that. But because they wanted to support me, because they believed in what I was doing. And that's a godly way to give. And they didn't expect any recognition from that. They, just, they didn't even tell me about it. Just all of a sudden, they started getting checks. Right? Isn't that amazing? And I got to tell you, those were some of those checks were instrumental in us making it through the month, right? God provides a way through you guys, right? Isn't that amazing? God, we are his hands and feet. God wants to use you in that way. What a blessing to be God's hands and feet. Jesus is calling you to give in order to support ministries that are all about saving souls for the kingdom, Here at NFC, we are about, what, sharing Jesus and growing together. That's our whole MO. That's our mission statement. Everything that we do, every program we put on, every drop of money in the bucket, that goes to kingdom work, okay? We are, we, are, we, are, we are trying to save souls for the kingdom. We are trying to get them Holy Spirit baptized, spirit-filled people so that they can go out into the world. And then they can be fishers of men. And then they can disciple others. Because, right, this, is, this church, this is just a stopping point. This is where you guys get refilled every week. And then you go out into the world. And you share Jesus with others, right? Amen. You can invest in that, too. God is calling you to use your earthly funds to invest in heavenly ministry. In kingdom, heavenly ministry. And the best part is, wait, there's more. You get a $200 sign-in bonus. Just kidding. (laughs) That's how they get you, right? (laughs) With a 30% APR. The best part is the Lord rewards this kind of giving. That's what it says. It says in this passage, he's going to give you a reward for this kind of giving. And I love this passage. Proverbs 19, 17 says, if you help the poor... You are lending to the Lord. Lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. So I just got to say, this this passage to me, this was striking this week. The idea that we're lending something to the Lord. Our God is God. He's the creator of the universe. He He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And he has said, if you help the poor, if you help the needy, you help people who need it, it's like you're it's like you're loaning me money. 
what? (laughs) But that should show you guys how important this is to the Lord, how important the care for other people is to the Lord. The investing in his kingdom is to the Lord. Oh, my goodness. It is dear to his heart. It's dear to his heart. He says to us, use what I have given you for the good of others, for the good of the kingdom. And if you do, I will give you a great reward in this life or the next. And honestly, I think it's both, guys. Like, we we tend to soften this a little bit by saying, you know, you might get it in the next. But I have seen time after time after time of people who have lived their lives generously And God blessed them in this life, too. My grandparents are one of them. Like, they made so little money throughout their lives, but they they dedicated their lives to the Lord. Every penny was as unto the Lord. And he has blessed them so that in their old age, they can live comfortably and bless others. They were never rich. They were never, like, incredibly wealthy, but they always had enough. And now they have more than enough. Praise the Lord. So here's my question for you. To whom do you look for your reward? To whom do you look for your reward? Do you look to people? Are men's rewards enough to satisfy you? Because really, you're making a decision in how you use your money. Are you going to try and live to get ahead based on, the, based on worldly values? Or are you going to live based on heavenly values, based on kingdom values? And it all comes down to who you trust. Who do, you, do you trust man's ways more, or do you trust God's ways more? Do you look to God, the creator of the universe? He made all this from nothing. Before all this was, he was. And with the blink of an eye, snap of a finger, whisper of his voice, this all came into being. He is enthroned in heaven, the God whose footstool is the earth. That's humbling, isn't it? He uses our, our, our earth as a footstool. Not literally. I, don't, I think it's just a way to show how great he is, right? <laughs> humbling, but yeah. He owns all this. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I love that verse. Everything you have ever owned is his. Who is more capable of rewarding you? Is it man? Or is it God? I'll wait. God. The answer is God. The answer is God. I'll talk to you afterwards, okay? Okay. (laughs) The answer is God. Hmm. Praise you, Jesus. But we need to trust him. We need to trust him. That's the issue. We don't trust God. We don't trust, with our, trust him with our money, at least. And so the way that we use it is guided by earthly principles, designed so that we get ahead. We claw and scratch and grab, trying to get as much as we can, trying to invest in this, invest in this, da, 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 which investing is fine. I'm not getting on investing, okay? Um, but we're not doing it guided by heavenly principles. But let me tell you something. The time that we have on earth is fleeting. It will be gone in an instant, in the blink of an eye. But the way that you use your money will have eternal consequences, positive and negative, eternal consequences. If you give to get praise, power, or profit, you'll live comfortably for 90 to 100 years, And then in a moment, it'll all be gone. It'll all be over, and you will have nothing to set before your king. You may make it into heaven, but you won't have anything to set before your king. But if you live your lives, if you give from a kingdom mentality, thinking about the kingdom, helping others, saving souls. You may not live in luxury, but your life will have meaning. It will have purpose because you invested your earthly resources in a heavenly kingdom. 
And when you get to heaven, you will have crown after crown, soul after soul, full belly after full belly to lay at the foot of your king, to lay at the foot of your master. And you know what he's going to say to you? He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have spent your life and your money wisely. Now come on in. Receive your inheritance. Receive your inheritance. Don't you want that? Raise your hand if you want that. I want that. Oh, my goodness. I would give everything. I would give this whole life, everything that I have accumulated, everything that I have hoarded, I would give it all to hear that one sentence. I would reorient my entire life to hear that one sentence. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Come and receive your inheritance. We are children of God, and he has blessed us and given us avenues of blessing. We need to take them. The Lord wants to richly bless you. Let me pray for you. And I saw pretty much everyone raise their hand, so I'm just going to pray for you all. Jesus, we want to be people of the blessing. And Lord, that doesn't mean chasing after the blessing. We want to be people who give to others. We don't give to get something in return. We give just to give because we want to be generous, because we want to bless others, because we want people to come into your kingdom and be saved for eternity. So, Lord, I lift up every single one of these people in this room, and I pray that you would give them hearts of givers. I pray that you would reorient their minds so they would see the value of investing in your kingdom, of giving towards your kingdom. And, Lord, we're holding you to your promise. Because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and your word will never change. And Lord, we are trusting that as we invest in your heavenly kingdom, that you will reward us. We don't do it for the reward, Lord, but we're excited for it. Amen? I'm excited for it. Bless these people as they go out, and they are gracious givers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, you know, I've said this before, but we don't get our image of generosity from, the, from humans. Our knowledge of generosity comes only from God. He has taught us these things. This book, this is his instruction to us. These are his words to us. And he teaches us how to live generously. And the greatest act of generosity that has ever occurred is when Jesus knowing you were a sinner, chose to lay his life down and die on a cross, a criminal's death, to pay your debt. So his blood can cover your sins and you can join him for eternity. That is something that has been freely given. That grace has been given to you. It is right out there. You just need to grab it and accept it. And the way that you do that is you turn from your sins You say, I'm not going to live that way anymore. That way is not for me anymore. And you turn to God. You turn to Jesus and say, be my Lord, be my Savior. And then you follow him. An intentional walk with God every single day, reorienting your life, reorienting your morals based on his truth, following him, living, walking in light. That's it. You're a Christian. Is there anyone in here? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there anyone in here who wants that kind of relationship, who wants to reach out and grab that grace? You want to place your faith in Jesus today. Anyone in the room or online, would you raise your hand? Yeah, I see those hands. And if you're online, God sees your hand. Now, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And everyone else in the room, even if you've been a Christian for a thousand years, we're all going to pray this together. Say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. 
I turn away from them. And I turn to you and ask you to be my Lord, to be my Savior. Save me, Jesus. And Lord, I promise to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't our God a generous God? Oh, my goodness. Praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer for the first time today or you're making a recommitment, you're in. You're in the family of God, and you will receive your inheritance at the end of time, at the end of your days. And if that was, if, if you did pray that prayer today, would you just text, uh, what was it? Restart. Faith in Jesus. What was it before? Would you just text, text restart to 97,000? That will just let us know that you made that commitment today because we want to follow up with you. This isn't a church that just leaves you hanging. We want to follow up with you. We want to walk with you in this experience. We love you guys so much. God bless you. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Christian. I, I love uh, the, the whole message, but one thing that really spoke to me was just that idea of what will I have to lay at the feet of Jesus when I get to heaven? What a, what a cool way to, to think about it and just summarize that all those, all those people we're bringing with us, all those people that we've helped, we will lay them at the feet of Jesus. That is awesome. Man, I want to be a part of that too. I love it. It's so good. If you are newer with us, again, I just remind you, whether you're in the room or online, text GREET to the phone number 97000 so we can start to connect. And if you're online especially, would you subscribe to our channel and even like this episode? That that just helps more people to be able to find us, find our our message, and, and hear about Jesus. Connect groups start right now, right after this, in in just a couple minutes after a little transition break. Uh, So we've got a place for you, uh, for men or women, you're you're welcome, and for youth and for kids. So connect groups for all ages right after this, also on Wednesday night. And this coming Wednesday night, of course, at 6 o'clock, come at 6 for our deliverance service. I'm really looking forward to that. Next Sunday, now, if you have been uh, a part, if you're local and you've been a part of our ministry, I just want to encourage you, come, come be in person. Come join us in person next Sunday. We're right here, 1030 Sunday mornings. And if you are far away, man, I'm so glad you're with us. We're really a one big community, and that is awesome. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you next week.